from the shadows she appears jenny lynn show You are watching Conversations with Jenny Lynn. And I promised you last week that this week I would be back with Mel because we have the plot twist that I mentioned. And I've been laboring, I have to say, mentally all week trying to decide how to share this with you because... <laughs> I am living this experience and I'm feeling crazy. So you watching what I'm going to tell you will think I'm crazy because it is so out there. But I am telling you the truth. And in case you have trouble believing what I'm sharing, in, in case you're thinking that I suffer bouts of craziness, Mel is here to tell you what I am saying is true because she has been going through this with me. So before I get into the plot twist and this week's segment, welcome, Mel. Hi, hello, Jenny Lynn. I'm so thrilled for you every day. I thank God for you because what I'm going through, I wouldn't want to do it with, I couldn't. I could not do it without you. So I just want to say a few things and then we'll launch into this. And what I wanted to say this week is I would like to dedicate today's segment to a really near and dear person to me who's now deceased. But she was my Mel before Mel. And the day she died, I felt like she took a piece of me with her because she was my spiritual teacher. She was like a mom and she was helping me to understand my gifts that I didn't understand. And there was no one else around me that I could trust to help me understand the things that were happening to me. And her name is Rita James. Rita in heaven or wherever you are, this segment is yours. And I wouldn't doubt that you played a part in bringing Mel to me. And so what I wanted to start with today, because it sort of goes in line with the plot twist, is I wanted to define an alien. And I looked this up because we hear the word being used a lot. And there was a time in my life when I was called an alien because I only had a green card. <laughs> <laughs> but that's not the kind of alien I'm talking about. An alien, based on the Webster um, definition, is a creature from outer space, an extraterrestrial. And I'm going to leave it there for now because I've already decided that some of what we share will be very, very basic. But when it comes to this, the details will be in the book, which Mel and I will be co-authoring, because this is not just about me anymore. I will do the portion that was about me, and then Mel and I together will do the segment that we have been experiencing. And so in addition to explaining what an alien is in terms of extraterrestrial, I wanted to say truth is stronger than fiction. The fact that the U.S. government is hinting that aliens are real may be the time for those of us wearing blinders to take them off and really examine reality. I am going to encourage you all also at this point to look in the bottom of this video, you will find Mel's information, as well as her tag floats across most of the videos while you're watching them. But I would also encourage you to find her on TikTok because she brings daily messages from the dis di divine for us. For some reason, I wanted to say design. 
And so having said all of that, I'd like to launch into today's segment. I have been working with Mel since July 3rd, and there has not been a day since then that she was not working with me two, three, four times sometimes, depending on what was happening. What I've learned from this is your typical bully reaction. When a bully has been controlling the arena um, on this dirt for many, many years, they own the arena and they run the show. But when the, the, end, the bully is now confronted with the end of their reign, they do what we all know bullies do. They start fighting and they fight dirty. And so Mel encountered a lot of pushback from Sandra Tong and her team. And there were times when I was doubtful that we would be able to conquer this and give, get me my life back. But Mel's guides kept telling her she can do it. And so we did. We sort of tampered that beast. And I was waiting to wake up one day and say, oh, no, great night's sleep, no disturbances, no disturbances during the day. But unfortunately, although we had been told that we tempered one beast, the, some of the stuff continued to happen. And it was perplexing to both Mel and I. We could not figure out why this was continuing. And one thing I did not mention in the beginning of this, and I didn't mention it because I had believed this person had stopped this. And when I first met Mel, I mentioned to her what this person had done. And this person, I'm going to give a name. He is a Dutch guy. And I'm going to call him the Dutch AB because those are his initials. And he and I met some years ago when we both worked at Philips Electronics. We later start, ended up dating and this person asked me to marry him three times. Three different occasions he flew to America and proposed to me, but I was always told that I could not marry him. I didn't know who was telling me, now I know it was my spirit team. They kept saying no. And so after the third proposal that I denied, this is the first time someone did stuff that I did not know existed, somehow tampered with my life using the dark. And you will read those details in the book because I don't want to go over all of that again since I've been doing that with Sandra Tong. But basically how I understand it now, and at this point I will hand it over to Mel after I explain my understanding so she can correct me if I am wrong. And then we will tell you more about the plot twist and what the Dutch AB from Philips has been doing all these years when I thought he had stopped. So what, how I understand the spiritual world, in the spiritual world of light, we know of the archangels, we know of Jesus, so whomever your person is that you pray to, that is of love and light. I believe the Buddhists, the Christians, the, as long as it is not a cult, they're all pathways to God. That is my understanding. Well, similarly, that's how it works in the dark world. And from what I have learned, Sandra Tong is a high priestess in the dark world. And A.B., the Dutch guy from Holland, is a, priest, a high priest in the dark world. So these two people know each other because they all work in the dark world. So in a nutshell, what I'm telling you, the plot twist is I discovered that both of these people had been working to cripple me and take my life away from me. And I will turn this part of the segment over to Mel. And she will correct what I've said wrong and explain 
from a professional perspective, because this is her field, what's really been happening. Over to you, Mel. Okay. All right. Um, I think I'm going to start exactly where I started the last time with Sandra. I want to explain. Um, well, first, I want to back, let me backtrack. Uh, how did we uh, miss this in the beginning? Right. I want I want to get to that point. And there's a very good good explanation for this, which we discovered. You see, um, he is indeed a, a high priest in the dark world. You know, in the satanic world. This is this is the key here. Okay, S uh, satanic world. Although I will I will explain the difference between him and Sandra in just a moment. Um, I will refer to him as a Dutch man because that is what my spirit team calls him, Dutch man. Okay, so I'm going to use that term. Um, so. Interestingly enough, um, we were showing signs of Sandra's um, actions being uh, disabled, right? We had very good, good um, you know, results in terms of uh, things slowing down. You even had a couple days of nothing, and then all of a sudden it would start again, and then it, it, it was different. And I remember you telling me or uh, calling me one, day, uh, one morning, and we discussed um, what it is that you found in the yard, and you mentioned uh, at one point that you were smelling some different smells and you were seeing some different things. And that's one thing led to another. And then you mentioned this, this man, okay? And something within me, I can't tell you what it was, but something within me stopped. And whereas before, I was literally like putting him off as, ah, oh, he's not involved. There's no, no issue because you've mentioned him before. You yes. said you were not involved in the beginning. Correct. Because that is exactly what I was meant to meant to um, feel. Is all of a sudden he was brought to my attention. And um, I asked my spirit team, I said, wait a minute. Why are you telling me that this man is involved now? And you didn't say before. And we figured out that actually this was sort of a protection for me so that I could handle or deal with one at a time and to differentiate between the two, because I'm going to be explaining to your viewers what is the difference is between him and Sandra, okay? And there's a big difference in terms of how they work and what they do, and I would not have known the differences and uh, how to approach these differences if I hadn't known that they were coming from two different people, and then I could direct what it is that I was doing towards uh, the source. That's basically in a nutshell. So um, that said, I, let's get to the point where I actually want to talk about him, Dutch man, and what it is that I've discovered about Dutch man. Okay, Dutch man is indeed um, a high priest, a satanic high priest. However, uh, what makes him different from Sandra is that he um, is what my spirit team refers to as magi. Okay, uh, it, which is sort of like similar to a male witch or a warlock. Okay, uh, so they call it magi. That's the word they want me to use. And I'm going to use that word. And what does a magi do? Um, a dark witch or a dark magi? Well, they use um, spells. Okay, they use dark spells um, in order to affect others, in order to get things done okay now the difference between him dutch man and sandra is that sandra um didn't um really do spell work in that regard she was more of a ritual type of person or is a more of a that's how it was shown to me she likes to do rituals which is also sort of if you so will a form of uh, you know magic if you so will but not to that extent he's they do not refer to her her as a witch or a magi at all, because she doesn't open a, a book that has spells in it and uses that to get things done. So that's the difference between him and her. And that also makes him and his methods a little bit more, I'm not going to say difficult, but a little bit more vicious, because he has access and does things to uh, that are different and a little bit more impactful to you. And he has stepped up his game. He actually has used witchcraft um, that has 
really affected you physically. And we had uh, one heck of a time just this morning, right? Um, right? We were not supposed to come on here today. So that's basically, you know, in a nutshell as the difference between the two. So I don't know if you want to say something to this or uh, where you want to go with it. As you were speaking, I'm like, should I have you tell them what he did? And then I'm, I thought it may be too much for people to handle right now. So I'm thinking what we could say is what he did was intended to stop me doing this segment today. Mm -hmm. um, just like Sandra sent me to the hospital when she spiritually attacked my chest or whoever does it for her. Is she the one who does it herself or does someone do it for her when, when I was attacked? But oh. Well, well she did it initially. Yes. Okay. 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 So when Sandra attacked my chest that caused me to go to the emergency, what he did is even worse than that. And um, actually, this is the second time he's done it. The previous time he did, he used a different method, but it had the same effect where I woke up with this headache that I can't even open my eyes. I was feeling nauseated. I felt weak. I didn't know if I could go to work. I just, I was just so sick. And I called Mel and I, we were both mortified when she discovered what was done. And God bless her. It took a while, but she and her guides were able to drain the stuff. And watching this, you might be thinking, how could anybody do anything to your physical vessel? People, I'm telling you, please learn from me. If you are feeling sick and you can't explain, people can actually physically hurt you in the spiritual realm. I am telling you, because I've experienced so much. I've taken so, I mean, I look back and don't know how I get through. Because now I had these two really dangerously dark people working on me every day. Now, you might be looking at me thinking, well, oh my goodness, why would all these people be doing this magic to you? And this is at this point of the interview, I will hand it over to Mel. And after Mel explains why we think these people are after me, then I will share something that happened yesterday. Okay. Well, um, first and foremost, for personal reasons, both of them are connected to you. And you so happen to attract two people that were, you know, not, not um, of the right mind who are in the dark space, okay, which is very unusual. So if anyone, I want people to understand that this is not something that happens every day, okay, there's a reason for why someone like you who's really never done anything to anyone and who's the nicest person that I can think of um, would have this happen to her. But and, and to be honest with you, Jenny Lynn, the full reasons for why um, this has happened to you are yet to be discovered. So there, we don't have all the answers just yet. We're getting a little breadcrumbs as we move along. But um, it certainly um, has to do with uh, something that you showed on your video last week. And that is uh, a couple of minutes of however long of um, souls coming out of your basement. <laughs> <laughs> and going into into the ethers to be released. So I don't know how much you want to talk about this, but uh, basically, is it safe for us to, or is it okay for us to share some about it? Because we did show the video. Yeah. Right. So they yeah. I think I think people understand, and I wanted to actually um, say this real quick. Um, witchcraft, I know, is is very people know witchcraft. Witches are everywhere, and this is nothing against the witch. Uh, uh, you know. Uh, which is because there there are some witches who are who are not practicing this kind of thing. This is, we're talking like the dark of the darkest. Okay, um, but when people when you speak of evil eye, people understand evil eye, right? And this is this is beyond evil eye. This is this is um, very much much um, on the level of again professional type of um, um, dark craft. Now, when he does this kind of stuff. He actually does these things in order to make himself powerful, okay? Make himself um, or be in control. And I want to 
want to touch on um, one thing that I'm just that's just been brought to my attention, and I'm glad that my spirit team does this. In order to understand why does someone do something like this or become this, you also have to go um, back to the childhood and where he comes from. And I know I mentioned this uh, uh, for uh, Sandra, and I'm going to mention this for Dutchman. Dutchman is someone who grew up in a satanic family. This is literally someone who, who had this uh, imprinted upon him from the time he was born. Okay, this is not someone who decided as an adult, oh, I'm going to go and start doing this stuff, and here I am. No, 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 no. We're talking um, a family who has been practicing this uh, for many, um, probably uh, decades before that, uh, generations. As a matter of fact, generations, and I'm going to say this, uh, I'm going to be very cautious as to how I word this. Uh, what I um, was told is that this particular darkness uh, um, aligns with the maternal line of his, the lineage of his mother and going back. Okay. So mother, uh, sister of the mother and, um, oh, here we got to go. <laughs> here we go. Grandmother. And I'm going to stop right there. I don't know how far back it goes because they only took me back to Gramps, if you so will. But let me tell you, Jenny Lynn, Gramps of Dutchman was something else. Okay. She was one of the worst. So, and she is, and I'm being, I'm actually channeling, I'm hearing this information as I, as I speak to you. Um, she has been connected or was connected. And I'm going to choose my words very wise, wisely here. She was connected to a very certain mysterious and controversial place in Belgium. Grandma was, grandmother. And that's all I will say at this moment. Okay. Okay. Uh, but so I just wanted to tell you um, and your viewers why he is like this. Again, we're, we're now speaking of two people who have grown up in this kind of environment, who know nothing else but that, who have learned or come to understand that when you use this kind of control and power through ritual and through um, magic, okay, that you can control and have anything you want that you can influence and manipulate anybody you want. And, you know, that is uh, why, um, you know, these kinds of people need to be stopped. I'm sorry, but, you know, I, I, I'm i all for people doing whatever they want to do in their own little world. But when it comes to um, manipulating and taking the free will of other people, that's it. That That's where the buck stops. Uh, and this is why um, I um, am getting a lot of help when I do this kind of work, okay? I don't do this work on my own. I have a lot of divine help and and other things that come in and assist me that I won't talk here. And, and again, I spoke to your, or I said that the last time, I don't do witch rules, I don't conjure anything. That's not what I'm talking about. But me as, um, as a person who is spiritual and who has connected with the spiritual world, I have um, also um, some help at my fingertips that, you know, are from the light that are coming in to assist me, um, not just him and her um, having the dark things at their fingertips, if you so will. Okay, so right. that explains it a little bit better. Yeah. Yeah, because, you know, it was amazing to me when I realized these two people actually knew, know each other in the spiritual realm and were working together to take me down. And they both have... <laughs> One of them felt rejected, but I think the reason he was so adamant and so determined to marry me probably had little to do with love and more to do with the fact that he knows what I am in the spiritual world. And I believe he really was bound and determined to marry me because maybe he thought, and this is my guess, that if I married him, he could take over my gifts. I have always been told that dark likes light, and I shine a bright light because, like, I try to be a good person at all times. I'm not saying I've been a perfect person because when people come at me, my broomstick and horns come out. I have to protect myself. And I've been through so much that I'm almost... You know, I'm I'm very protective of me and I know how to protect myself in the physical world. But clearly I didn't know how in the spiritual world. And this is because I was oblivious to what is going on. 
Now, I will tell you that I met this Dutch man in 1999 and cut him out of my life since 20, since 2003. And so when I discovered he's still doing these things to me, I was shocked. But one thing I do know is he has shown up often in my dreams. And I think I mentioned this to you, Mel, while you were clearing Sandra, I dreamt of him and I told you, and I could share the dream here quickly so people watching could hear the dream. He came to my house, I was sleeping, and I woke up in the dream, I woke up and he was standing at my door. He's very tall, so he had one hand kind of holding on the side of the door. And I was just waking up and he looked at me and he goes, see, I'm not the one doing anything to hurt you. Remember? And I thought, that's weird. Why would you come in my dream and tell me this? And I called Mel and I said, Mel, are you sure that this guy is not? Why would I dream this? And at the time, Mel's guides were shielding him from her. And I believe since it's just her, what was that? I don't know. <laughs> okay. <laughs> they didn't want Mel to have to deal with both of them at the same time. Right. So um, I also want to briefly inject uh, and tell your viewers that there is a other life connection, a past life connection. And it's, it's so interesting. I wasn't um, going to go there. On, on my own, unless spirit shows it to me, unless my spirit team shows me. It's always kind of like this. When I go into a, a case, for instance, I, you know, take into consideration what others may have said or done um, or experienced, or you know, with regard to your case or other cases. But I always want to be sure that I experience it or I'm, I can see it or sense it myself. All right. Um, because that's where I, then I can step in and do it. So it's interesting that I I was shown a past life connection to this oh, man. Yes. And and you mentioned yes somebody else one of the other healers had mentioned it or he had actually mentioned it. He himself I think did. And I'm like, yeah, that is true. He wasn't lying about this, but the way uh, the now, past connection now, came Can I just tell them real quickly yes, what you told me and then you tell them what you channel. Oh, that's okay. So, oh, absolutely. Yes. Yeah. During the course of my relationship with this person, with Dutch guy, he convinced me that I needed to marry him because he told me he and I had a previous life together. We were royalty. He was a king and I was his queen and we lived a really great life. And one day we were on a ship and the ship was attacked by pirates and we both drowned. Now, I didn't understand or know anything about past lives. So the same way you're probably looking at this show, that's how I was looking at him, like you're nuts, what kind of past life, you know? And one thing made me like really consider what he was telling me because I'm afraid of ships. I do not like water. I cannot watch movies with ships sinking. I just can't. If I'm watching a movie and a ship is sinking, I turn it off. So anything to do with pirates and boats, I cannot look at it. I don't I could never tell you why. And I'm I'm petrified of being on boats and water. So when he told me this, I thought, well, maybe he's telling me the truth. And one day he took me to this woman or we were at a fair or something, and there was a woman there doing past life regressions. And she told me, you two were, told us, you two were married in a previous life, and I see you in a white gown, you were beautifully dressed, and I could see the dress rising up as you sunk, because you died drowning. And so it was always sort of in the back of my mind, but I, I wouldn't say that I believed it. Um, but he would not leave me alone. And he was very obsessively jealous. And always, always like right behind me, wherever we went. So I started thinking, maybe he really believes the story that 
we died on a ship and now he's found me again. He doesn't want to lose me. That's how I justified his behavior. So now I'll turn the story over to Mel and she can tell you what she found out this week. Yeah. So um, I decided that I was going to look into this other life or past life to see if there are any... Oh, Mel, sorry, one thing I forgot to say. I said to Mel, Mel, I think that there's a cord attached to me and this guy because he won't leave me alone. It's been too long. I want him out of my life. And Mel says, I will check. And if there's a cord, I will cut it. And that's how you went looking. Correct. Yeah, that's why I went looking. I went looking and uh, into the other life. Okay, I'm in specifically. And this is one of the things that I'm capable of doing. Okay, as I have shamanic tools to do this. And uh, so I was presented with uh, two people. Uh, and I knew that one of them was him and the other one was you. And interestingly enough, uh, you had one like a tiara type thing on you know on your head and he had sort of like a crown and i said that's interesting because you know uh it's it's almost as if it, it sounds like exactly the, the kind of thing that he told you because i remember you telling me this now here's the only difference is though what i was shown wasn't a boat uh, wasn't wasn't a ship okay i actually showed him putting you on a boat like a rowboat you know and him, you two going on a lake. It wasn't the ocean. It was a lake. And him rowing the two of you in the middle of a lake. And I, and I, as I'm observing this uh, visual in my uh, third eye, um, I said, okay, what's going on? And then he literally, he stopped the, um, the boat. And I, all I heard was you questioning. You, um, the woman, in this case, you were questioning what, he was doing why you were there i mean you trusted him that you were you know he knew what he was doing but you were wondering why he stopped and why what was going on and he got up to the best of his ability that you could stand on the boat okay and he went over to you picked you up and threw you in and you started to sink literally arms like this down like that and when you when you talk about the woman seeing a, a, a white dress, I actually you were wearing white, just so you know. Um, oh I've my never. God, you did not this. tell me this. You were wearing white, so um, it was almost. And but the, here's the thing: he jumped in afterwards, and then he was sinking as well. So and I got the sense of that neither of you knew how to swim, so it was kind of like, um, okay, he took your life and his own. And I thought to myself, well, why is that? Why why would he do that? And I received the information that um, he did something, something that had to do with where, he, um, with, you know, his, his status, that they were going to come after him and he would have to be um, held accountable for his actions. And maybe he was at risk of being taken and, um, you know, thrown into prison or even, uh, you know, uh, murdered or whatever it is that you want to. Uh, that went on during that time but he he decided that if he's going to go that he's going to take you with him at his own terms and i actually get the, the sense of that he may have altered the memory of this um and that that he sort of has created through this magic that you associated with with uh ships because it wasn't a ship it was a small boat okay and it wasn't the ocean. It was a, definitely a lake. So, uh, you know, I, and I, I wouldn't have, I wouldn't have known to, to actually uh, know what to look for and, and, and to, to see what it is that I was going to see. Now, I will tell you this is there was a cord. I was looking when you were both sinking, you were both sort of looking at one another. And I saw that there was a connection and I energetically severed it. And let's just say in the vision, you disappeared from the sinking down. He only, he was the only one who remained. So that told me uh, that you were no longer attached to this particular um, space and time. And, he, but he was, he kept going, going down. So yes, um, I was very grateful that you actually mentioned this or uh, brought it up again, because there was a cord. All right. There was one. And ever since then, um, and I'm not sure, let me go check real quick. 
All right. So I and and I'm sorry. I want your audience to know that when I check, I want to make sure that I say that I say what it is I'm supposed to say. Okay. Um, he reacted. What I mean to say is this, and what he and Sandra doesn't know about me is that I sense and feel when he has a reaction or she has a reaction. She not anymore. She's not on my radar right now. But what I'm going to tell you is this, Jenny Lynn, is when he, when something happens and he gets angry because he's full of rage. He's he's someone, Dutchman is full of rage. That's the best way I can describe it. I have never met anyone or sensed anyone who has so much rage within him. Mm -hmm. So when when things happen, he reacts. It's like as he's tapped in. He's very much they're in touch with the ethereal world, but so am I. So he doesn't know that I know that he knows. <laughs> so, so I mean, by me telling now he does, now he does. <laughs> and this is why I wanted to check with my uh, spirit team. Should I mention this? And they say, absolutely. So um, Dutch man, if you're watching this, I know exactly when I do something and when something works because your reaction gives you away. So there you go. That's all I wanted to say. And for those of you who are curious about him, this is this is quite a story also. I did not know the two were connected. As a matter of fact, when I was telling a friend before I met Mel what was happening to me and everybody told me it was Sandra, they said to me, I thought you told me that this Dutch guy had done something like this to you for the very first person who ever did this to you was the Dutch guy, Arian. Oops, and I said his name. I'm not going to edit it. That's not an accident. And so I said, yes, but he doesn't do it anymore. He's gone on with his life a long time ago. Although when I'd gone to people for spiritual work, they ID'd him, but also told me he's no longer doing it. So either he had a way of hiding while he was doing it, or maybe he and Sandra had an agreement that Mel would think it's just her. So then we could never really put an end to this. Because as far as Mel has been told, Sandra's magic has been whatever. I don't want to say the wrong words, Mel. You fill in here for me. But... <laughs> then we couldn't explain why I was still being tortured. And so yes. now we know. But you'd have to read the book because I will write the story and put all the details about him in the book and all the crazy things he did. And I will address the rage Mel is talking about. He beat several guys up during the time that we dated. In fact, I worked at Phillips and my job was to welcome any new hires into the company and almost every one of them he beat up which was not good for my reputation in the company although i wasn't the one beating them up i was his girlfriend so yes i'm very well aware of his rage yes and i want to speak briefly on why others have not um found him or why he was hidden and this has to do with witchcraft okay and uh, one of the things that um, I have learned uh, with, through witchcraft, through I have there, I have removed sort of spells uh, from other people, and they weren't anything like like him. Okay, they were just it's like a regular you know um, a spell that that you can you can get when you go to have someone do something. And one of the first things that I've learned is that um, spells are hidden. Okay, they're almost so they're very much hidden um, uh, and often very, very, very um, difficult to detect in, in when when you tap in energetically. Uh, and that's for good reason. That's why they're, they're uh, spells. OK, this is not uh, something. And, and they're different things. And I'm, I'm speaking of the regular witchcraft type of stuff now. I'm, I'm not familiar with all of the witchcraft around the world. You know, there's voodoo. There's all those different from the different cultures. I don't know. I haven't encountered them all. But I do know that witchcraft and those who practice witchcraft have a way of hiding uh, what it is they're doing very, very well. 
Okay, so which is, I'm not surprised that nobody could could detect him initially, okay? So ju just know that. Um, and, but here's the thing, and this, this is probably why he's, uh, my spirit team asked me to go after Sandra first, because she was probably of the two, um, the more direct. Uh, okay, they want me to rephrase that, I'm sorry. Okay, so, and again, I'm channeling, so I'm sorry when, when I stop like this. So the reason why um, Spirit told me to go after Sandra first, without me even being aware that there's another person, is because Sandra was using these, these entities uh, that were physically, okay, uh, uh, giving you a hard time. And she also attacked your uh, your essence and had all of that that needed to be regained you see there's a certain process that needs to happen um so uh, in order for you to be able to um fight this on your own with my assistance you needed to regain what was taken from you and she was the one who took that it wasn't him so therefore that part needed to be uh you know handled first before we could tackle the witch the witchy stuff that he's doing so i hope that explains a little bit are you having issues right now? Yes. Are you are you are you all right? Yeah, I think we could finish this. Yeah, <clears throat> it started about ten minutes ago. Well, guys, it looks like we're going to have to end our session because I'm being attacked right yeah. before your very eyes. My chest feels like somebody's locked it into a cage and I feel like a nail is going through my scalp. So for those of you who don't understand what happens, maybe God is allowing this so you can see. I'm going to be, Mel and I will be back next week because we are still in the middle of this battle. And um, until it's finished, we will come back and share with you. And again, we're not doing this for fame. We're doing this because we know that I'm not the only person, although how unlikely to have two of the biggest, baddest witches in hell coming after me must make me more special than I even know. Because both people have exerted a lot of energy into trying to take me down, as, as we've been sharing. And so we are yet to discover why. But until then, we will be back next week as my lungs are on fire. And uh, please like and subscribe because the more of you who like these videos will get it into before more people. And my whole goal is to get this out there so we can help others in my situation. Mel, you want to say, you want to leave your message and then I'll wrap it up because my voice is going. Yeah. All right. Yeah. And I think we need to wrap it up so that I can assist you right now. Um, I think, to be honest with you... <laughs> This is a good example of what we're what we're dealing with okay and uh earlier today this is exactly what happened you were tried to uh you were affected so desperately this morning uh that um we didn't know whether or not we could do the segment today right um so i want your um audience to know that this is not a joke okay that uh i don't come on here to speak of these things because I have something to prove. Uh, you can believe me or not, um, you know, the spiritual realm and the energetic realm is kind of what I do and, and what I know. So, um, you know, this, as Jenny Lynn says, we're doing this so that if any one of you has an issue that you can seek help and you don't have to come to me for this, you can go to anyone, just the recognition of that something's happening is what's most important. So that's what I will leave your viewers today. And that way I can go ahead and help you um, take care of this right now. I will be back next week with our next segment. <clears throat> From the shadows, she appears, Jenny Lynn show.